Many people have a memory of a grain elevator from their childhood. In many rural areas, grain elevators are the largest buildings around. When I was growing up in southeastern Washington, in a town called Eureka, the elevators were by far the largest buildings in town, if one could call Eureka a town. My grandfather built the tiny elevator you see here in Eureka, as well as the shed that sits next to it, to store grain in. Everything wooden that had historical value at our original Eureka location has been burned and destroyed. Time rots the boards and the wooden frames slowly collapse. The original house my father and his siblings grew up in has been demolished, and the original shop has been demolished as well. All that is left are these steel grain storage bins my grandfather built in the concrete bunkhouse. Across the street is the Eureka elevator. Massive in its size, it is now largely unused, but it still stands because some of it was made from concrete. Fire took the original elevator that would have sat between the two remaining concrete structures. The original elevators in Washington State were wooden elevators. They were mostly situated on railroad tracks, and there are few of either of those left. Come with me as I explain a bit about why there will be no wooden elevators left standing, and why one day all of the old wooden elevators will be demolished or dismantled for their timber. Grain storage facilities come in all shapes and sizes, from tiny round steel bins and grain sheds to massive concrete and steel elevators, and outdoor grain piles. My name is Trevor Struthers, and in this ongoing video series, I'm going to give you a tour around some representative grain storage facilities that were built in different time periods here in southeastern Washington state, where I do hillside wheat farming. From the mid to late 1800s, American agriculture transitioned from a focus on subsistence-based farming to a cash crop model. Farmers in grain-growing regions, such as the Midwest and the Inland Empire of the Pacific Northwest, had a growing need to move large quantities of grain across long distances. Grain elevators together with railroads and river barges and dams, became increasingly important in the bulk storage and transport of grain. Why would farmers want to store grain in grain elevators? Grain elevators made grain handling and storage more efficient and saved farmers money. In Washington State's Columbia County, construction of grain elevators in 1918 saved farmers $50,000 that would have otherwise gone to pay for grain sacks. The vertical storage and handling aspects of grain elevators helped save on labor by using gravity to move the grain. The handling of grain in bulk was rapidly transforming the old methods of harvesting and grain storage, with grain being elevated directly into motor trucks or field bins and hauled to elevators in bulk. Many elevators were constructed near railroad lines or rivers to facilitate bulk transport. Though by the 1960s some off-track elevators that were a little more distant from railroads started to be constructed in eastern Washington to make truck hauling more convenient for grain producers. From the 1800s to our current time, grain elevators have been constructed of a few different materials. In the early days, they were simple structures made of wood. By the mid-1900s, concrete and steel became the preferred building materials. Regardless of the building material, certain components, such as the head house and the workhouse or work floor, were part of all grain elevators. The workhouse or work floor is the lower part of the elevator, where grain is received and the process of elevating the grain begins. The head house is found at the top of the elevator, and is the place where the head drive of the vertical conveyor system is found. Farmers deposit grain into the pit of the workhouse or work floor. The grain is then elevated by a vertical belt and bucket conveyor. Each bucket on the conveyor is basically a scoop that carries the scoop full of grain up the conveyor. The grain is lifted to the head house where it is then sent through the distributor to the selected bin. Openings at the bottoms of the bins allow the grain to be released into chutes, and from there into railroad cars or trucks. The wooden elevators of the 18 and early 1900s had separate bins inside the elevator, allowing different qualities and types of grain to be separated. These elevators were fairly informal and simple structures to construct. One common way to do so was to build a so-called balloon or stud frame with long vertical 2x4s for the interior. This type of construction was very lightweight and expensive. These frames were evidently called balloon frames as a derogatory term, meaning they were flimsy enough to be blown away in the wind, and some were known to do just that when they were left empty. The exterior of the grain elevator provided some reinforcement. It was constructed by covering the balloon frame with 2x4s laid flat and nailed on top of each other. This required a lot of lumber, but made for a sturdier exterior wall that could do a better job of keeping insects and rodent pests out of the grain than the older wooden elevator designs would have. The density of the wooden exterior also could provide at least some amount of protection from fire. This type of wooden elevator was known as a crib elevator. The early wooden elevators' close proximity to the sparks that came off the steam-powered locomotives led to many fires. In addition, some of the wooden sides of these elevators were left bare to the elements, but many of them were covered in a type of corrugated galvanized steel sheeting, 
When you picture an old grain elevator, these classic metal sheath wooden elevators are what often come to mind. Many of these old elevators escape demolition by the owners twinning them together with newer steel or concrete bins. The Harshaw Elevator on the corner of Harvey Shaw Road and Highway 124 here in Walla Walla County was at one point the largest crib elevator in the region. You can see how it has been twinned with these newer steel bins to make it still useful to this day. Although steel and concrete grain elevators were sometimes constructed during the late 1800s, they weren't very common in eastern Washington until the 1940s and 50s. The transition from wood to concrete and steel as the preferred building material for the new grain elevators was primarily in response to rising fire insurance rates and was more of a reactive than a proactive measure. Grain elevator owners were required by Washington state law from the mid-1940s to have fire insurance. But by 1948, insurance companies had become unwilling to insure the largest wooden elevators up to their full capacity because of how common grain elevator fires were. 1947 was an especially bad year for grain elevator fires in eastern Washington. And in 1948, grain elevator owners were having to take out 8 to 10 fire insurance policies on average to get their full elevator capacity insured as the law required. Washington state was unique in this compulsory insurance. The neighboring states of Oregon and Idaho did not have any such laws. Despite the fire hazards, existing wooden elevators continued to be used. To address the concerns about fires, some fire reduction strategies began to be implemented in wooden elevators by the late 1940s. For example, grain elevator owners set stricter standards for the grain they were willing to accept. This is because grain that hasn't fully dried by the time of harvest heats up more during the storage than dry grain, creating a risk of fire. For this reason, in 1948, owners of wooden elevators began installing moisture testers so they could reject grain from growers if the grain still had too much water content. In general, the mid-20th century was a time for innovation in eastern Washington grain elevators. For example, in 1949, a farmer from the town of Dayton developed a way to remove highly flammable rust and smut dust from the lower part of grain elevators, which not only mitigated the risk of fire, but also improved both grain quality and the working environment for elevator employees. Smut fires were a prolific problem in the early 20th century where wheat was handled. Both rust and smut were common crop molds that reproduce by spores found in standing wheat. These spores create a very fine dust when the grain is harvested, which is bad for respiratory health as well as being highly flammable. By 1950, a grain elevator fire alarm device had been invented in Spokane, Washington by H.B. Wright of the Wright Electric Company and was being installed in elevators. The detector bars of the device were placed in each grain pit, each leg head, and in the peak of the roof. The detector bars were highly sensitive and the alarm would go off when temperatures of 160 degrees Fahrenheit or higher were detected. Indicator lights were also installed at the base of the elevators so firefighters could immediately tell upon arrival where the fires were. This device was met with approval by insurance companies, which gave lower insurance rates to elevators that installed the devices. Not many of the old crib elevators remain around here. They are all more of a home for pigeons and morning doves than for anything else. Rarely visited and never used, they sit idly in different states of disrepair, awaiting their eventual disappearance from the landscape. Some elevators have been turned into museums or stores, while others have been made into homes. While most people would agree that the majority of remaining wooden elevators are dangerous places that should be avoided because they are often condemned buildings with unsafe floors and are often located in isolated areas. Maybe you would like to buy an old elevator in your own region and restore it to its former glory, or perhaps convert it to suit your needs. Either way, if no preservation measures are taken, these unique historical structures will be gone forever. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like it, you should consider subscribing for new and varied content from both the Vaults of History as well as current farming-related content that I put out each week. Have a good one.